President al-Assad affirmed to the Foreign Minister of Democratic Korea that the West and other countries which support terrorism must realize that the threat of terrorism goes beyond the region to reach the whole world and the countries supporting it. After restoring security to Kesap, the Syrian Arab army eliminates terrorists in a Samra village and its surroundings and cut off the roads of supplies coming from Turkey. Units of the Syrian Arab army continue to chase terrorists in Latakia and Damascus and other areas. Al-Maliki stresses that Iraq is being subjected to a wave of terrorism supported by regional powers as part of a vicious conspiracy. Iraqi troops continue their pursuit of terrorists and repel an ISIL attack in Bakuba. An Israeli airstrike on Gaza causes material damage. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Erado Krikorian with the News in English. President Bashar al-Assad today received the Foreign Minister of Democratic Korea, Mr. Ri Soo Young, and the delegation accompanying him. The meeting centered on ways of deepening cooperation between Syria and Democratic Korea in several domains, particularly in connection with economic development and reconstruction. President al-Assad said the West was seeking through various ways to weaken and divide the states that were not under its control with the aim of subjugating them. It depended previously, the President added, on agent governments to implement its schemes. This role is played today by the terrorist gangs, but it will fail thanks to people's cohesion and determination to protect their own homeland and independence, the President asserted. President al-Assad added that the West and other countries which support extremism and terrorism in Syria and the region should learn the lesson from facts and previous experiences and realize that the threat posed by terrorism goes beyond the states of the region to reach the world as a whole, particularly the states that support it. Units of the Syrian Arab army killed and wounded dozens of terrorists in different areas in Aleppo. The Syrian Arab army's military operations targeted the areas of al Ramun, Bani Zaid, Ritan, Hanano, al Muslimiya, and Bustan al-Qasr. Syrian Arab army units also destroyed vehicles used by terrorists in several areas adjacent to the industrial zone. In a special operation, the Syrian Arab Armed Forces successfully carried out a complicated naval landing recovering a Samara village adjacent to the Turkish borders, eliminating the terrorist gangs there and cutting off the road of supplies coming from Turkey. The Syrian Arab Army units continue, meanwhile, to pursue terrorists in Latakia, northern countryside, after restoring security and stability to Kesab. <laughs> In a few days, the Syrian Arab army has achieved a remarkable progress in taking control of new mountains and hills in Latakia countryside, eliminating a large number of terrorists. Having taken control of the strategic 45 site, the Syrian Arab army has thus seized the road between Kesab and the Furulluk forests, as well as Al-Zahi mountains chain, overlooking site 45 and site 719 and al Lars hill, enabling the Syrian Arab army to monitor any movement by the armed troops who fled in the direction of al Rabia, al Souda, and al Khudra villages. Several terrorists have been killed or wounded in Dara'a and its countryside by the Syrian Arab army units who destroyed their hideouts and a number of their vehicles and criminal tools. Syrian Arab army unit targeted an armed terrorist group who tried to attack a military checkpoint in the town of Inkhil in Dara'a suburbs, killing and wounding the members of the group. Syrian Arab Army unit also destroyed a terrorist's vehicle and killed its occupants, 
on Talujabie, a Sukkeriye, and two pickup vehicles near Ghabagheb. The Syrian Arab Army units also destroyed a terrorist hideout in a Nasr farm in Dara. They eliminated terrorist gatherings in a Nuaime in Dara eastern suburbs and in Atman village in the city's northern countryside. <laughs> The Iraqi security forces have repelled an attack by the terrorists of the Islamic State in Iraq and Levant in the city of Baquba, 60 kilometers northeast of Baghdad. The terrorists had killed 29 detainees after taking control of Al Wahda police center northwest of Baquba. On the other hand, the police directorate in Ziqar Governorate has declared intention to deploy federal police forces with the support of the clans to secure the governorate's borders following the infiltration into the area by terrorists coming from Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. The Iraqi Minister of Tourism and Archaeology has meanwhile talked of 4,370 archaeological sites in five governorates which have been exposed to acts of sabotage and smuggling. Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki has affirmed that those who commit crimes against the Iraqi people and destroy infrastructure, bridges and vital installations are hired killers supported by foreign agendas and forces. He said the Iraqi people have hastened to volunteer and join the Iraqi army in order to fight the terrorists and protect their country. He voiced determination to continue confronting terrorism and foiling the conspiracy that is supported by regional states, warning such states that the terrorists would come back to them to flare up their countries and undermine their thrones. Iraqi armed forces continued their operations against the so-called the state of Iraq and the Levant in different governorates, inflicting heavy losses upon them. An Iraqi military source said that the Iraqi army foiled attempts by terrorists to break into Tal Afar in Ninawa, eliminating scores of them. Meanwhile, Iraqi security sources captured 17 terrorists, including an Afghani individual affiliated with the state of Iraq and the Levant terrorist organization. Inside the city of Mosul, two terrorist leaders were killed. Meanwhile, high-ranking army officers stressed that more than 100 armored vehicles carrying Saudi plates near the Syrian-Iraqi borders. Several Iraqi sources reported that Saudi intelligence officers have entered the Iraqi territories to support the terrorists in different Iraqi parts. Iran's Assistant Foreign Minister for Arab and African Affairs, Hussein Emir Abdullahian, asserted that the U.S. administration is the reason for the emergence of the terrorist groups in Syria and Iraq, and the U.S. does not have any intention to combat terrorism. Abdullahian said that the Americans hold the top of the thread for those terrorist groups, pushing their movements to serve the U.S. interests. The Iranian officials stressed that Washington's allegations that they are coordinating with Iraq or cooperating with Iran in the fight against terrorism are nothing but part of efforts to serve the U.S. interests only. Abdullahian asserted that the fatwa of the Islamic religious references who urged for the unity of Iraq succeeded in foiling the scheme hatched by the enemies of the region. Prime Minister Dr. Wael al-Halaqi stressed during his meeting with the Foreign Minister of the Democratic Republic of Korea, Ri Soo Young, that the two countries face the same challenges and have been defending the same universal causes of justice and freedom and trying to oppose the Zionist imperial plans which seek to spread terrorism worldwide. For his part, the Korean minister expressed the desire of his country to expand cooperation relations in the economic, industrial, agricultural, scientific and trade fields, praising the legendary steadfastness of the Syrian people in the face of the barbaric terrorist attacks against it and its ability to emerge victorious despite all difficulties. Israel has escalated its aggressive attacks against several areas in the Gaza Strip. Israeli aircraft raided the area near the west gate of Asda city, south of the Gaza Strip. 
Other Israeli planes raided a workshop in Yaffa Street, northeast of Gaza, causing further sabotage to Palestinian properties. On the other hand, Israeli naval forces targeted fishermen and their boats off Khan Yunis and Rafah cities south of Gaza, damaging several boats. In a ferocious aggression on the Palestinian people, Israeli forces of occupation continued to raid several cities and villages in the West Bank, arresting dozens of Palestinians, including 51 previous, who had been released from the Israeli jails in 2011 in exchange for Israeli soldier Jalad Shalit. Meanwhile, for the fourth day in a row, Israeli forces of occupation kept the city of Hebron a closed military zone, while a number of Palestinians were injured by Israeli gunfire during clashes that erupted in Nablus. In occupied Jerusalem, the settlers storms, stormed Al-Aqsa Mosque through the gate of Al-Maghariba, and the Israeli occupation forces prevented the students and the worshippers from repelling thugs of Israeli settlers. In the besieged Gaza Strip, Israeli occupation vehicles and bulldozers made an incursion in the farm land east of Khan Yunis amid an Israeli gunfire and a cover by Israeli reconnaissance planes. British Foreign Secretary William Haig has admitted to the increasing number of Britons who have joined the terrorist groups in Syria. Haig said that about 400 British nationals are fighting in Syria, some of whom within the ranks of the Islamic State in Iraq and Levant organization. On his part, British Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg also admitted to the threat posed by the presence of Britons fighting in Syria. Patriarch Gregorios III Laham, the Patriarch of Antioch and all the Orient for the Melkite Greek Catholics, has called on the states supporting terrorism in Syria to shoulder their responsibilities towards the terrorist war in the country and to stop the influx of weapons to the terrorists. During the opening ceremony of the Melkite Greek Catholic Church Synod in Ain Traz in Lebanon, Patriarch Laham said, Lebanon is currently in a state of vacuum in the presidency, calling on the parliament members to elect a president as soon as possible. Members of Egypt's new cabinet, headed by Prime Minister Ibrahim Mehleb, took an oath of office in front of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, who later chaired the first meeting of his new cabinet. As Sisi reviewed with the ministers the tasks and assignments of the future plan, on top of which was restoring security and order. As Sisi's directives to the ministers of defense and interior included pressing ahead with efforts to fight terrorism and to protect the borders and the national security. The new Egyptian government has 34 ministers, including four women. There are 13 new ministers, including Ambassador Sameh Shukri, who has become the foreign minister, while 21 ministers continued their work from the previous government. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Jawad Zarif has said his talks with U.S. Assistant Secretary of State William Burns focused on Iran's nuclear program. Concluding his talks with Burns and the EU Foreign Policy Chief Catherine Ashton, Zarif said the Iraqi issue was not succeed discussed. Earlier and shortly after arriving in Vienna, Zarif told Iran's state TV that drawing up a draft for the final deal in this round of talks was possible despite existing disagreements between Iran and the so-called 5 plus 1 group. Zarif is set to meet the Chinese and the Russian delegations in Vienna, as well as the general director of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Yukiya Amano, ahead of the fifth round of nuclear talks aimed at finalizing an agreement on Iran's nuclear program. Russia's representative to the UN, Vitaly Chorkin, was surprised by the absence of any reaction by the UN concerning the attack that targeted the Russian embassy in Kiev lately. Chorkin said the UN General Secretary should defend the international law in such cases, wondering about the reason of not issuing any condemnation by the UN Security Council. He also pointed out that many members have expressed their regret over the absence of any opportunity to condemn the attack, which was described by the French ambassador as a mistake, noting that disrupting the statement's issuance by the Lithuanian delegations shows a clear breach of UN traditions. 
Now to latest business and market news, but after a short break, stay tuned.